you've decided you want title graphics on your project. You want words to show up on screen at the beginning. So to do that, I can use the text tool. Now Adobe introduced the TLF text in their, oh, I think it was uh, CS5 or so. And that allows you to actually have dynamic text fields that on the fly you can change it so that if you need to change the language, so instead of being text going from left to right, it goes right to left or it goes top to bottom. Because you're doing a multilingual project, TLF text is awesome. If you just need some words to show up on screen because it's part of your title sequence or your credits in your project that you want, you don't need TLF text, which has all kinds of other annoyances in it because if I use TLF text and I click and let me try again I don't want that but just want to click and start and say my title like this and now if I run my movie it's going to come up and it oh I forgot it it remembers now not to say something but what it does is it needs an additional file with it to display correctly and also notice the text is selectable so look at that text is selectable we don't want text to be selectable it's the title it's part of my animation I don't need that we don't want TLF text we don't want selectable when you're working on your project you want your project to be classic text static text and then we're going to be much happier with it and we can um, let's see where is my selectable Oh, and when you're doing classic text, selectable is this little AB right below in the character under properties. Deselect that, and now I can't highlight it. Because if I'm animating the text, that's what I want. Now, anytime you're animating something, it's recommended that you convert it to a symbol to animate it. Flash does allow you, you can take text and you can just animate a text field like this and it's not going to overly scold you, but I would encourage you to use a good practice and that's convert it to a symbol. That's also going to give you more options down the road. So if this is my title here, if I'm going to convert it to a symbol, I hit F8. On my title, there it is and now I can right click on it create motion tween so if I want this to be my title and if I want this to fade in it's generally recommended for doing something like that at the beginning if I were to look under color effect I could decide by fade fade is usually alpha which is transparency so if I choose in alpha. Currently I'm at 100%. If I pull this down, we can see it looks like it's going gray. If I go all the way down to zero, I run into a problem that I can't see that it's there. So anytime you're doing fades with alpha, it's actually recommended that you start your fade at about 10%. Because now I can very faintly see that it's there. So I can see where I've put it and what's going on. And the difference between zero and 10% is not there and then now we're going to start having it show up so it, it really if you do your fades to or from 10 percent instead of to zero it's going to make animating a little bit easier because you can find your stuff in the timeline and now if i want this to and no i do not want auto recovery do not show that to me again so now if i want my title to fade up I can go up to a hundred percent so we can see now it fades and then I will have it stay at a hundred percent here and to do that I can hit F6 that inserts a keyframe and then I will go to the end and pull it back down to about 10 percent and now we can see it comes up and fades out now if I test my movie we'll see it happens fairly quick looks like it's pulsating. So in the span of animating this so that it's appropriately readable and stays on screen long enough, we probably want 
the text to stand screen for at least a full second worth of readability. So to do that, I can stretch this out. So I'm going to have about half a second fade in, half a second fade out, and then on screen for about a second. So if we know 24 frames a second, that means 48 frames would give me uh, two seconds. I'm just going to go to an even 50 because it's you know, an easy mark to deal with. So we don't need, we're not timing it per, you know, uh, precisely. We're just going based on feel. Now to move these keyframes, because currently if I do it now, it fades up, fades up. But if I wanted to fade up slower or fade out faster, I need to move those keyframes. To select an individual keyframe, click on the command key that selects it, and then I can move that. So if I want it to fade up very fast and then stay up, so you can see it fades up and then fades out a little bit slower. So I can decide do I want to fade up fast or fade out fast, and I can adjust that again. Hold down command, click on the keyframe, and then I can move that keyframe to where I need it to be. So it fades up and then gently fades out. So you can see what's going on there. And I'm just looking to see if I can find something. All right. So now I have one part of my title. Now if I want to put something else on screen, I could say by give myself credit for it. Now with this, I don't want it left justified, I want it centered. Move that over. And then if I want to stagger these, I just need to move that block of frames over. So we can see my title fades out. But now this chunk of frames really needs I'm almost thinking I want by to be separate and then John McCaffrey. Because otherwise I don't like the two lines. So if we're gonna do that, delete that, convert that to a symbol. Convert this to a symbol. And now I'll need to put these on separate layers, but I can do that by highlighting both. I can, um, oh no, it's up here. There's an option if you have a bunch of artwork on one layer, I can choose distribute to layers. This will now stick these onto two separate layers. So now the, and we can see that probably need to move by, so it's, so it's all now right here. And we'll need to stagger these things out. So we can see that the number of frames things are occurring is now not ideal. So I'm going to need to adjust that. And I can ditch that layer, I'll just call this one. Title. And it would make sense to have the layers in the order that I want them to stagger and appear. It just makes the timeline a little bit more readable and understandable with this. So keeping all of my la layers separate, I can control the timing appearance of each thing. Theoretically, because they're all staggered and not overlapping, I could technically have the three separate motion tweens all on one layer, but I would discourage you from doing that practice. So now I can create motion tween, create motion tween, and if I just put my cursor near the end, I can scrub this back. We can see now they're all here. 
can turn off layers I don't need, so now we just have buy. Gonna is that Flash now is able to take the motion that we've applied to something. In this case, I have a motion tween applied to my title. We applied a motion tween to it where it's my title. We're not moving per se, we're tweening the alpha property of the text, and that's all. But that tween is just a series of settings. And the cool thing about it is that in Flash, I have an option, I can right click on a tween, and I can actually copy that motion. Even though, so you have to use an expanded definition of motion. Motion includes all properties of an object. Position, scale, rotation, color, transparency, all of those modifiable properties. So I copy what I've applied to my first one. And then now, if I go to my next tween here, I can scroll down and choose Paste Motion. And notice it just pasted in those same keyframes and has the same fade. So I didn't have to manually go through and reset all of those. I can. I mean, I can now turn that off, go here. So I could start out and click on this, and I can change my alpha, and then I can go here and change my alpha again. But as you can see, copy pasting a motion when you're doing something repetitive can be a very nice time saver. So I could now go change this at this point up to 100. At this point, I can just hit F6 and then go to the end and knock it back down to, or so and it's being difficult there. so now all three have the same motion applied but you can copy paste it which is really cool they'll come up they'll fade out now to adjust my timing because this is a motion tween I can just double click and move this one over Double click, move this one over, and now if I test my movie, we'll see my title. And now I'm on my way to creating nice, fancy movie graphics. If I want, I could even set this up as a crossfade so that it's actually starting to as one fades out, so we're getting almost a dissolving effect between the two. So you can decide, do you want space or not? If I want, after it says buy, if I want more time, I can even move this so then after buy, it's empty before my name fades up. It's all about adjusting the timing. And when you use motion tweens, you have a lot of flexibility. You can move individual keyframes. You can make that tween span longer or shorter. So I might decide that by, because it's so short, really doesn't need to be on screen that long. I could shrink that down and then pull this over. So there's no... And then maybe I want my name to be on screen longer, so I would stretch that out, tweak the keyframes, because, well, I'm important, so my name should be on screen longest. That's how it should be. So it's about adjusting the timeline to get the right visual and intellectual balance of display. So you're showing us what we need to see for the appropriate amount of time. There is no magic formula of, oh, the word should be on screen for one second or three seconds. How long does it take us to read and process what we've seen? If it's on there so long that we get bored watching it, it's probably too long. If we can't read it because it flicks on, flicks off right away, like, whoa, what was that? I didn't even process all of what I've seen. You need to slow it down. So it's finding that balance of time so that it gives you what you need. 
And to prove that this is being done with alpha, I'm going to add in one more layer, and I'm just going to put a box on here uh, that it's using alpha or transparency. So we're going to have color on screen. Now I need to go move that layer down, but now if I run this, we can see where it's fading over that background that I have drawn. To begin creating my character, one of the things I would recommend that you would do is that you lock layers that you're done with and not currently using. Always lock layers so you don't accidentally add artwork to the wrong layer, lose track of your artwork, can't find it because you put it on a layer you didn't intend it to be on. And now I'm going to have a new layer and this layer is going to be my character. And my character is going to be comprised of some sort of body shape. It's going to have some limbs that are going to move. It's going to have an eye. Might even get a mouth or two. We'll figure it out as it uh, grows and evolves. Now, if I want the character to start after my title, I need to then, on its layer, insert a keyframe at that point. I could in, while I'm in the development phase of creating the artwork, it really doesn't matter what frame I start with because I can always now move the artwork. Once the artwork is a symbol in my library, I will be able to add it to my project wherever I want. So it really doesn't matter where I begin. I'm going to just turn off these layers so I don't have to see them. And now I'm going to create a character. Now, as part of this, and this is what's nice while you're working in Flash, is you can very easily draw, you can erase, you can fine tune edges of things. Oop, I went too far there, but I can easily add back as part of it. What I really want on my character is I want it to, I need to separate it into its own layers. I could add a whole bunch of layers to the main timeline. So each leg, each facial feature gets to be its own layer. But then when I go to move that character around in my project, that's a lot of pieces to move when they're all supposed to kind of be linked or connected together. So this is where it makes sense to have it as a symbol. Now I'm not going to draw the legs as part of the body here, but I want to put them on their own layer. So I'm first going to select the starting point that I've done, hit F8, and I will give it a name. It's going to be a symbol. Now if I double click on it, I'm inside that. So we can see I'm not in scene one, I'm inside my symbols timeline. Every object gets its own timeline in Flash. And you can nest an object inside an object inside an object inside an object forever. So you can have a timeline and a timeline and a timeline and a timeline enough until your brain starts to hurt. And that's okay. We looked a little bit at that last time. I'm going to continue with that again today. So this is going to be my body layer. I've decided the body and head are going to be separate, so I'm going to cut these apart and redraw them because that way I can even animate them separately. So if this is going to be the head, um, for that matter, I'm just going to start over with that and draw things. So I will have a head. I'm going to have a body, and then I can have an arm, an arm, a leg,
He's not a very happy looking guy yet, but we can change that. We can give him a happy expression when he needs it at the moment. Uh, now, if I want to fill these shapes that I've drawn, grab the paint bucket tool, I can go grab a color and try and go fill. Okay, that worked. If I click on the arm, click on the leg, they're not filling because the shapes that I've drawn are not closed shapes. They don't have endpoints, so the fill is like, well, where should I stop when I'm going to fill? So it needs to have some type of closure on it. And this is where you could use the pencil tool. I could draw a line like this. That now put closure on this shape. So now if the paint bucket is grabbed, I can close it because it's now a closed off shape. I've, in essence, put a lid on it. Where again, this one won't work because it's not closed. The face will work. I don't want to do that yet because I'm going to separate the eyes and mouth onto their own layers. So we'll work with that in a moment because I'm going to start nesting things a little bit deeper. So I'm going to grab the pencil. I like smooth versus straight, and I just get an. Smooth gives me a cleaner line when I draw. Close those shapes off. Got the paint bucket. If I want to find the same color, I can use the eyedropper tool, which is I on the keyboard. Click there, it's immediately onto the paint bucket. So now we can see I have some stuff. Now these black lines. What's nice about them, because they were drawn separate from the painted areas, I double click on it, it selects it, hit delete. Double click, it selects that line, hit delete. So I can very easily get rid of those lines that I use just as a guide for fill, and now I have a nice, easy, filled shape. So this can be a technique that you can use for filling. At this point, I want to start making all these body parts into their own symbol because then I can animate them a little bit easier and make him wiggle and woggle and do whatever I need him to do. We can have a version of our guy standing, then we can make a version where he's waving, we can make a version where he's walking, and we can do all kinds of fun-filled things. So, if I select the artwork, I'm using the select tool, hit F8, and guy, right arm. Going to name all of my things. Oh, it's all right, missed hitting F8. Oh. Name all of my items, starting with guy, left arm. The reason for doing that is not because I'm anal retentive, but because it starts to organize my library for me. Because if all of the symbols related to this character are prefaced with the same letter or word, that self-organizes them in my library, making it easy to find artwork associated with this character. So as an organizational tool, that works nice. You can use folders and put stuff into it, but I find that this is a fairly um, useful technique that you can work with. Now when I'm going here trying to select the leg, it's also selecting part of the body. So I might want to switch to the lasso tool, which allows me a little bit more control. Guy, okay. right leg. Guy, okay. left leg. And so we have arm, arm, leg, leg. Now I need to select his body. His torso. And head. So now that everything is a symbol, can move it around. Well, notice how things nicely tuck behind. And his head, because it doesn't have any 
filling it yet. It's not closing, but that's okay because we're going to work on modifying his head. If I double click on his head, you'll see we go from scene one to thing to guy head. So we're now nested a little bit deeper. Now, with that, I want to select one of those eyes, but I can't get to it very easily. I selected an eye. Um, I'm going to select both eyes because his eyes will just blink. I'm not going to make where he's a winker or anything like that. He's not going to wink at us. He's just going to have his eyes periodically blink. So did you select the both of them? All right. So I've selected the eyes. Turn it to a symbol. Switch back to the select tool, double click. Now we can see we go from scene one to thing to head to eyes. So we're inside the eyes. And also notice that when you go inside a symbol, existing artwork does fade out. It's not selectable, so I can't select anything here because it shows me where I am in relation to that. But I can't do anything about it. So now, if this is what is eyes look like and it's going to be easier to color these eyes um, if I zoom in a little bit more so I can select them. So here are the eyes and I'll need to color the lids go for the color I was using for blush and then for the whites of the eyes I'll go for uh, just a gray so we know it's not white. So if his eyes sit here and look like this and we say they'll be good for about two seconds and then we want him to blink, give or take. So at this point I can just hit F6 to a new shape. Now I could hit F6 um, or I can and we're gonna I'll need to zoom out to redraw the eyes but I may want to use onion skinning so I can just draw over these because I don't want I don't want these same eyes so probably would have been better to just hit F7. But to see where the eyes are, turn on onion skinning so it shows you that view. Go to the paintbrush. And now If I turn off onion skinning, let's see, his eyes go from open to close. Like that. We'll need to fill them. So if I use the eyedropper to select the orange color, go to the correct frame. Now, how long the eyes should remain closed is going to be a matter, you know, it's up to you. Does he blink for a half a second, a third of a second? Do they stay closed for a full second? You know, I'm thinking it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a half a second or 12 frames that I would want these closed. So I just hit F5. Now, the nice part about blinking, you'll just sit there and like that's probably too long. So I'm going to shrink that up just a little bit. And then this will loop back. So when we're in his head, 
Let me get inside his head and see what's really going on. I'm going to separate the mouth onto its own layer as well. Um, so I'm just, he doesn't get a mouth yet. Fill the head. So there he is. And then if I want a mouth, I'll just draw one. He's feeling happier now that he can blink a little bit. Looking a little bit <laughs> smug as part of it. All right. So now, looking, looking at the guy here, we can see here he is. And nothing's happening. His, his timeline is nested, and his eyes are three timelines deep. So we really can't see it. It's just like Inception, where we're you know so many dreams deep that we don't know what's going on anymore. But if if I run my movie, um, I'm just going to move him over here so he's out of the way of the title. I'm going to watch, and you'll see that every so often he blinks because his timeline is now nested separately. I want him to occur after my title. You can see the title ends at 140, 139 precisely. So we need to move this over. Oh. So we'll start him around 150. But now he can be in the middle. So, title. And then after two seconds or so, he'll blink. He'll blink again. And if you decide you don't want it to be like clockwork, blinks, waits, blinks, waits. What you might decide to do is to modify that so that maybe then the next time he goes longer before blinking. So if I copy that, or even easier than copy pasting is we just highlight all these frames. By option drag frames makes a copy. So I held down Option after highlighting the frames, and then I made a copy. Now this time, let's move this out so it will go longer before blinking the next time. So there's about a two second, and then a two and a half second. So it starts to stagger it, and maybe this blink is faster. So hold down Command, you can shorten that up a little bit. Having kind of asymmetrical or non regular repeating patterns creates more realistic qualities within the animation. So now I just have th this is my guy, my thing here. We can see he doesn't do much. But, you know, maybe. Now we, we could even set it up so maybe. When he just stands here, maybe his head moves a little bit or something. Now my advice on this is I have one version of my guy called thing here. What you can do is you can have multiple versions of that. So using that as a starting point, I am going to duplicate it. So I'm going to go to the thing here, and I'm going to say duplicate. And this will be thing walking. Now if I double click and look at thing, we can see inside its timeline, looks like this. If I double click on thing walking, it looks the same. But now what I can do with this, 
highlight those objects and use what we looked at before which is distribute to layers and that now puts everything onto its own layer arm body leg leg arm or head body leg leg arm arm all in its own layer so now I can make this version of thing walk making him walk last time we noticed when you're trying to move some pieces around you sometimes have to modify their registration point so I'm going to take and as part of this walk sequence let's see if I can cheat and select everything and say create motion tween so I highlighted everything right clicked create motion tween and added motion tweens for everything so that's good now I'm going to modify some registration points here because I want his leg when it swings and moves to kind of go from what would be a hip joint I don't want it to spin around in its middle so I click on the artwork, put it, you know, you know kind of about here, well, not up there, there. So then when it rotates, it's like it's going from his hip. Because otherwise, if I take on the arm, we'll notice see, it's rotating. That doesn't make sense. So if I move that registration point to where his pretend shoulder would be, see, ooh, he can wave. Go to the other one, repeat the same process. You can wave. And even go into the head and put it more down towards the neck so when his head bobs back and forth. Ooh, doo -doo, doo -doo. And he can sing and hum while he's walking. I'm not going to record any audio into it. I'll let you run that through your head when you animate. You, you can animate and hear that yourself. So if he's here, I'm going to now now decide that to begin movement I want to take a leg and pick that leg up as that leg picks up I'm going to pull the body down just a hair so it's boink so we're creating a little bit of movement and maybe the head is going to follow a little bit with that but it's slightly off and as that leg moves I'm going to take this arm and pull it to here actually I want sorry this one up This one down. Then we can change the sequence. Pull this one down, pull this one up, pull this one down, pull this one up. Let's see, and between those two it's got a little marionette dancing action going on here it's having some fun now I'm going to return it back to what would be more of a neutral position to end it and decide that I don't want these extra frames so if I just highlight frames this is one of the nice things you can do if you highlight frames hold down F5 adds frames if you add a shift to that key command it makes frames go away shift F5 the highlighted frames poof gone periodically you'll add layers you'll end up with all these extra frames you're like I don't want those frames how do I get rid of them highlight what you don't want hold down shift hit F5 on the keyboard they go poof and disappear.
Okay, so now, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh. Some, there we go. I hit something and magically got frames. So now he's got a little wiggle woggle going on here. Profile walking sequences are far easier than getting someone to look like they're walking to you if, unless you break the body into enough pieces. Because realistically you need things moving and swinging in front of the body and behind, otherwise it's hard to get that kind of walk sequence. So if you are planning walking, walking across the screen is far easier than frontal, but we'll make it work. Now if I decide though this is too quick, and I'll see how in just a moment. So there's character. I'm going to just add a new layer and put thing walking on screen up here. So you can see he's moving around. But the nice part about this is if I want him to walk like this, it's kind of like he's walking to me. So I'm going to shrink him way down here. Oh, I like go shift too soon. As he faces the camera, it would make sense for this to be a character that could motion tween and get bigger. So he starts out here. And now after so much time, well done shift, he gets bigger. So we can see he gets bigger. Now, he got too big too fast. I don't like that. But animation is change over time. So if I want that amount of change, I can hold down command, click on the keyframe, move the keyframe out, and see if that's better. It's a little better sequence. Makes more sense based on his little baby step movements that he's doing. And he's getting bigger and now he's parked there wiggling on top. And once again if I decide that's all I need from him and I want him to stop and let's move the other one over so they're not overlapping. Oh should they end up next to each other? Wouldn't that be nice? You know, they just appear you know, because they're best buds. And they end up at the same place next to each other. So we'll put them here and instead of starting them in the top corner, I'm going to start them down here so it's like he's just kind of walking up. And then they're best buds. He's catching up to his friend. So now that that's occurred, I don't want him to keep walking. So I need to tell him to stop. And this is why it's useful to have a walking version of a character or a flying or exploding version, but also just a plain one. So what I can do is we don't really need this to occur anymore so we're going to stop that in a moment but at this point added a new layer put in a keyframe now we just put out a copy of the unmoving one right on top and right here if I hit F7 sorry I have to delete the frames first so now we can just F5 this and my selecting skills are lacking this morning. Shift F5 goes away. So uh, what I've done is I've created the illusion goes from here to there. Stop being the walking one and now it's replaced it by the static one. So he walks up
catches up to his friend. Oh. And because they were added at separate times, so they effectively started at separate times, they're not blink blinking in sequence with each other, which is kind of cool.